Elaine Ashley, and I'm the founder of The Fizz is Female. And I'm so excited for The Fizz is Female Kava edition. This is our first uh, regional spotlight we've done this year. So we're very excited for that. I'm also amped to have a co-pilot this time, uh, my buddy, Jen, my little like San Diego soul sister, uh, Jen Carruthers of JC Select Wines. And Jen uh, was responsible for uh, bringing you the wine packs that we sold for this event. We have a two bottle Kava pack available for $55. So if you did not get that for this event, You'll definitely want to after we tempt your taste buds <laughs> after this presentation. And it's going to be available on my website at thephysicsfemale.com and through Jen's website at jcselectwines.com. And we'll be speaking with three sparkling personalities from Catalonia this evening, all just kind of badass females in Cava country. We have uh, Maite Esteve, Esteve of Ven El Sep. Marta Casas of Paris Balta and Judith Lapp yep, from uh, Vins Familia Ferrer. And we'll be, we'll be tasting three of their wines. The final wine we'll be tasting is not yet available in the US. It will be available in August. However, a few lucky people on this call do have the wine. So um, congrats to you for getting to taste um, this yet to be released Cava. So the format of this evening, I'll be chatting with each of the winemakers and or brand representatives. And then Jen will interweave the tasting portion of the event so we can taste while we talk. Uh, so let's get going. We're gonna first chat with Maite Esteve of Vin El Sep. And Maite um, and her wines were the first biodynamic cabas in Spain. So she has a lot to talk about with us this, this afternoon and or evening, wherever you're based. And uh, Maite, please tell us about your role as general manager of Ben Elsep. Hi, hello. Uh, Hi. Thank you for being here. And, um, uh, first of all, uh, my English is very bad, but <laughs> my, I am very enthusiastic with my wines and my winery and my vineyards. And uh, I am, yes, thank you. I am the general manager from Vinzel Set, but I have different departments in my table because I am wine grower, wine maker, and general manager. <laughs> I, I work for different uh, departments. And uh, for me, it's very important. The most important is control all process. I control the vineyards. I have people who work in the vineyards, <laughs> but I control the vineyards. I control the moment when we start the harvest. I control the seller, the production, and I control my clients. No, this is it's possible. It's difficult, but it's possible. And this is very important for me because you have a complete uh, vision is in English, a complete uh, 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 feeling about uh, all my work. And I think this is very important for me, okay? And normally I have a lot of, uh, I, my times is in the normal years is travel a lot because we export 90%, principally in the United States. This is my oh, sure. first market. And uh, we sell in 24 states in the United States. And this is a very interesting market for me. And I have a good feeling because normally the people help me when I speak in English <laughs> in the United States. Also, well, you and, speak much better English than you give yourself credit for. But you did tell me uh, privately, or you told all of us on the call before that you were you first brought the wines to the U.S. in 1990. Yes. Or nine was it? And and that people in your country thought you were crazy because you saw potential in this market. Will you tell us a bit more about that? Because I love rebels and risk takers, and I love that you uh, saw a vision for the U.S. market not long before your country did. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I start to sell in the United States because when we start, uh, we are, you know, our we are for families of wine growers. 
We are when growers make cava, make wines. And here people don't understand a lot. It's crazy, but people don't understand a lot this one. No, We make organic, we make biodynamic, we are wine growers. And our philosophy here, people don't appreciate this. Don't. And for example, in the United States, I have friends in the United States. My brother studied viticulture in California. And then when I start to go to the United States, and principally California, people say to me, oh, this is very important. You are wine growers, you make organic. And, and, and I start to know more people and sales in one stage, two stages. And I work with Jorge Ordóñez. This is a very important people in my professional life because he's one of the first Spanish people go to American United States market. And I work with Jorge around the United States. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about the four families behind the wine yes. tree? Yes, we are a very special seller because uh, we are four families. This is a project with a friends, wine growers, because in uh, 1980, my my father, my uncle, and two neighbors. Uh, they have a very important properties, vineyards, for uh, 500 years. It's a very old families in our region. And, we this, and they decided to work together, to make one cellar for work, the four families, and our grapes, and uh, Oh, I don't know, our grapes, uh, make wine with only with our grapes for the four families, no? And um, this is a very, uh, I think it's a very special pro uh, uh, project because now we are the second, uh, in the cellar, we are the second generation. Now we are the, the daughters, the only <laughs> women. And uh, it's a very nice story because when, uh, for example, in, uh, in times of phylloxera, you know, finally in 18th, uh, in uh, 1890, when I started the phylloxera in Penedès, in our properties, there are only women in the, prop in the, in the families, only women. And they have one problem with the vineyards because the vineyards are finished for the phylloxera. And they, only women, start all other times to plant vineyards and to work in the vineyard. And now we are, other time, only women in our properties. This is a nice story, no, I think. I love that. I mean, this is the Fizz's female event. So we like more women power, the better, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so why don't we uh, now loop Jen in and taste your kava? Okay, I think uh, the most important for my cava, this is uh, the new, this vintage is 16 vintage. It's four years in bottle after second fermentation. It's a grand reserva. Okay. It's one brood because uh, you know brood is maximum 12 uh, grams of sugar, but this one has six grams because we consider it, um, they have a very good quality and uh, we don't, and we prefer uh, more uh, drier than uh, only than uh, 12 grams because I think it's important to to taste the wine the quality and I think this vintage uh, sorry it's, it's the first vintage we we introduced the Pinot Noir the Blanc de Noirs because you know we plant a lot of Pinot Noir in 19 and uh, for me is one uh, my prefers uh, uh, varieties. Uh, we, we have a very old vineyard from Charello for 70, 90 years, but you know why I, I discovered the Pinot Noir in California and I think it's very interesting for our cabas because when you make cabas with a long time in bottle, the Pinot Noir have a very interesting acidity for us and it's a good complement for our variety, varieties. This cava I think is very complex, very round, uh, have the, it's very creamy, have the typical uh, notes of uh, charello, the uh, white fruits, the apple, pear, and, and citric notes, but 
have an special, uh, I think the Pinot Noir likes more round and more long finish, no? Oh and, yeah, you did a great I job like of blending. I mean, there's that, yeah, that quote, the whole is better than the sum of the parts. And you really have done a great job of always, always, always represent, representing Spain and Cava, especially with that Charello, and then um, bringing in a little Pinot for what it, what it adds to the party. I think you did a, a fantastic job. It's, I mean, the first way, yeah, go ahead. Oh, for oh. those of the, um, for the audience on the call that are not so familiar with kava, uh, could you just go over um, the kava traditional method and the um, grapes and kava and all of that before we dive too into the wines? Before we, before we completely just geek out or just sort of go like. <laughs> A little from, refresher course, please. <laughs> from, the, from the goodness. I mean, all these wines are spectacular. So they're all made in the traditional method, methanoise, which means they're made exactly the way they make them in Champagne. Um, we just can't call them Spanish Champagne anymore because the French don't like that. So, uh, so we, we, we call it Cava. These are all very, all three wines that we're tasting today are incredibly high quality Cavas. They are um, full of texture, complexity. I mean, these, these women and families have done such a great job of um, like I said, representing their country. So the, the three grapes that are a little bit foreign to, you know, in, in, in Champagne, you hear Pinot Noir, or Pinot Meunier, Chardonnay. Um, when you get to, to Cava, the Cava region, you have to learn how to pronounce them, first of all. So uh, the Charello seems to be the, the common thread between all these three. Um, and then you have, uh, wait, hold on, Macabeo, which kind of makes me mm -hmm. want to and like shake maracas or something. And then uh, Pareada, the other uh, typical grape of the region. And then you, it is interesting to see like, oh, I went to California and I tried, or, you know, champagne and tried some sparkling wine with that Pinot Noir influence. And why, if, it, if, it, if it adds a brightness and an elegance to it, then why not add that to the, the cava to give it, you know, a different character. So that, that's where we're at, Maita. You're my favorite and you're doing a great job. You speak English better than I do. Your plain favorites, Jen? No, 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 no. We can't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. That was more of a segue back to my and I and I might. <laughs> no, but I think I mean I I I love this wine, and I opened this probably about an hour ago, and it is. I mean, it's singing. So the before I ever tried it, um, your description to me was hold on, bright and serious. And I think that was like, I don't think I need to write anything else down because that really describes it. It's got such brightness and freshness to it, but everything about it just screams, I'm not messing around. I am a serious wine. Um, I'm stoked on it. I am very serious, like my wines. I would like, yeah. to, <laughs> I would like to just- tell me that all the time. I would love to point out a comment uh, from a friend of ours that's opening up a wine bar, a sparkling wine bar in San Francisco. She said, the fabulous cava, drink it as soon as I got it and love it. So it looks like someone's already down to bottle um, <laughs> of one of the cavas. <laughs> so on that note, cheers. <laughs> right? Cheers, everyone. Uh, now, why don't we move on to um, sparkling personality of Catalonia number duh, or no, two, what's two, dos. Um, <laughs> I, I, I switched between uh, countries, pardon me. Uh, Marta Casas, the winemaker and sommelier of Paris Balta. Now Paris Balta is one of the three cabas that I've had the pleasure to enjoy and as did Jen years ago. So it's the one wine we were, we had famili familiarity with um, and we're very excited to have you here. So this is a full on family business. Um, you've been with the business for 20 years. I'd like to know both how you've seen the kava industry evolve and your experience and involvement with Paris Volta in the last 20 years as a winemaker. Yes, it's a very large uh, way and a lot of histories and stories uh, with love as well with uh, my beginning that was uh, a love story with me and the wines and with my husband. I'm good. Sorry, there's someone with, okay. And uh, uh, Paris Volta is a family winery that uh, you have said and uh, two women, uh, 
um, we are uh, uh, in church in all of the um, process, beginning with the viticulture, that's uh, with the ripening process, and then with the winemaking. And a lot of things that uh, we have done between these 20 years ago, making the sparklings, of course, because it was a winery that uh, the beginning was only making sparkling wine, the cava. Then uh, my father-in-law started with the still wines and uh, with uh, the third generation that we are, uh, the both women, the sister-in-law, and with the husbands, the, the, the brothers. Uh, we are doing a lot of different things. And uh, it was born Blanca Cuisine. That's the, the cava that uh, today we are uh, tasting. It was in 2003. My second, yes, my second uh, harvest that uh, I, I have done, uh, it was Blanca Cosine Born and uh, this blend, that's a, a special blend that we wanted to, to make with these varieties that our iconic variety, Trello, that's uh, mainly in this blend, uh, com completed with uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. So, a lot of things, uh, a lot of passion that uh, the grandfather uh, had this, uh, this feeling with the biodiversity, with the nature, with the vineyards, with the animals as well, because uh, we have a crop of sheep uh, growing to, to the, coming across to the, the vineyards and uh, eating the grass, the weeds, and uh, with uh, the vineyards in the mountain that there with the forest, uh, it has a lot, a lot of uh, biodiversity. So with this whole of things, we are working together, all the family and uh, every harvest making different things and having always the, the mind opened to make different things. And with Blanca, that's our micro cube cava blend that today I'm uh, very, very happy and very proud to offer to you and uh, to enjoy, to enjoy and have a toast. <laughs> Cheers. Um, I want to point out that in 2013, you earned your master's degree in biodynamic practices. Yes. And that same year, you converted the winery to biodynamic practices. Um, did you have to do much convincing to your family? to convert, um, you do share responsibilities as winemaker with your sister-in-law, which I just envision drama. Like, I don't see how, <laughs> how it can be a full family affair without any drama at all. But um, uh, <laughs> you, have, you need to keep balance uh, between all because we are very different. We are uh, with different yeah. characters, but uh, well, with uh, the two couples, we have a good balance. Uh, all of us, we have different visions and this is good for making these wines and uh, making this vision of this agriculture that the, the biodynamics start uh, little by little. It, was, uh, it wasn't um, a thing that we said, today we want to be biodynamic. It was uh, the vision of the grandfather that started, uh, started uh, very, very early. Uh, when uh, I arrived here in 2002, he said, me, Marta, uh, please, you are a pharmacist because um, I studied pharm pharmacy and I was, uh, I, I worked as a pharmacist in a, in a pharmacy here in a town. But uh, then um, when I finished uh, pharmacist, I started um, winemaker and uh, I shared, uh, some uh, lessons with Judith in, in, the, in, the, in the university, in the, the next winemaker. So uh, it was a decision that uh, it was uh, with uh, different steps. And uh, then the grandfather said always, I want to work with um, the, the nature with a lot of uh, patient with a lot of um, uh, take care about the, the, the soil, about the plant. And uh, always he, he said, I want to have um, the, the juice of the grapes just fermented in the glass. So um, don't put any herbicide, any chemics in, in the, any pesticide in the vineyard. And then we, with the winemaker, with the winemaking, sorry, uh, please uh, only the minimum of the sulfites and that's all. And I said, yes, uh, you are right. So it was the, the beginning here with the organic way. Then 
uh, it came the studies of biodynamics and little by little we studied uh, two years, two years and a half. And uh, the beginning was, well, mm, let uh, to know this and we will see. And we were mm, uh, aware, we, we had uh, the, the vision of the grandfather and we said, wow, it was the way that the grandfather wanted. So working with animals, working with uh, the plants, the forest and uh, having the vitality to the grapes, then to the, to the glass with the wine. So it was his vision of the future that he wanted to do this into in uh, 2013. The, when we finished the, the well, I finished uh, in, in 2014, and now I'm doing the third degree with the rhythm of cosmos, with the moon and with the other planets and the constellations. So I'm just finishing in, on July, but uh, all these um, uh, little steps and with a lot of um, studies, with a lot of uh, learning uh, daily, daily uh, we are learning and uh, with uh, this, uh, we want to transmit to the customers, to the to our um, workers and uh, people that are in in the company. Th that's a philosophy. That's a way of life. Bringing life to the soil, bringing life to the vine, and then with this vitality in these grapes that uh, later we transform into the wine. So this is the the goal that we have with biodynamics. I love this. So Jen, I know, is chomping at the bit to go over her tasty notes for La Blanca cuisine. So Jen, take it away. <laughs> chomping at my flute glass right now is what I'm doing. <laughs> this, I, I, I love this wine. I, I, so uh, Pat Esbalta, I used to, I used to sell this as a rep for 10 years, but I can tell you that I was never to the Grand Reserva and I'm going to have a chat with who is the distributor for this wine and asked him why it was holding out on me for a decade. Um, it's stunning. This wine is really stunning. And it, especially as it opens up, I guess I don't normally have bottles open for an hour and have anything left in the bottle. So, um, but yeah, no, it's it's beautiful. And I, I love how much Chardello is in there. So it's uh, mostly Chardello, like 80%, and then combined with a little bit of Chardonnay and Pinot. And I loved the explanation that you gave when I asked you about it. Um, what Charello gives to the wine and then how the Chardonnay and the Pinot just kind of almost elevated a little bit. So if you could share that with our gang, that would be great. Yes, uh, the Charello has uh, this structure, this um, texture in the mouthfeel. And then with the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, uh, they give the, the elegance, this finesse, these bubbles that are very soft um, as well because of the um, aging. It's uh, almost uh, uh, 80 months uh, aging because it was bottled in uh, 2013. The vintage is 2012. So a lot of uh, time aging. And then this sensation of creaminess, this sensation of uh, toasty notes because the Pinot Noir was barrel fermented as well with batonnage process. And then this blend, it's perfect for this elegant cava that uh, we wanted to do in 2003 in, uh, with this vision of the grapes in the mountains that we have there, the Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in the mountains of Penedes, that's uh, in the north part. And then the Chorello in the um, flat part that's uh, here, just here in the winery that, we, that I am now in the winery in the terrace. <laughs> and you ferment, so you ferment the Chorello and the Chardonnay together in stainless steel, and then you do the Pinot Noir in oak. Yes, in, yes, but uh, the three varieties separately, all yeah. in yeah. different tanks, in the barrels as well with uh, the Pinot Noir. And then finally, we make the blend and then the tirage and finally the decorsement. That would, it was my, my bottle, it was decorsed just uh, the beginning of the year. So 80 months, so it's uh, quite a long age. And that, that fennel is really coming through now, yes. which I'm like, is that, is that fennel? Is that, is that what that is? I mean, I, I, I love this wine and like the almonds and the toasty notes, like all these wines are such like rock stars and I, 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 they deserve so, you know, such a great platform. 
um, on the world market, I think everyone should drink a lot more kava. I mean, I'm going to do my part as much as I can. I might even cover the quota for a few of you out there. Um, but yeah, person, I mean, I just, I think this is a fantastic wine. And I have to say, as someone who sold wine for 10 years, like, I can't say that labels don't matter. And this package is just beautiful. Like the simplicity of it is just, I don't know. Simple, simple I'm, label. I am forever. Yes. yes. Well, and I actually, so I bought, there were only 24 bottles left in the country and I bought them all. So if I haven't drank them all, you guys have them. So, right. so as I mentioned earlier, we have kava packs available for this event. If you didn't get them, they're still available and they're quite affordable at $55. So they'll still be available well after the event. Um, so Kata's Balta normally retails for like 45 maybe. And then I think the LSEP, the Vins LSEP retails for like 25. So we're doing a little package for $55 because we wanted to get it in the hands of some awesome people. That's me. So <laughs> um, on that note, we'll go on to winemaker number three and a wine that's not yet available in the U.S., but Jen and I are going to be promoting a package with this wine when it does become available um, in August, we hope. We'll hear all about we it. Hope. Yeah. <laughs> the last one well, should be out um it should be available to us in the u.s and sorry paris um actually you probably already have it and i'm just jealous of you but it should be available in the u.s in august um and there may or may not be a mug that says a coffee mug that says this is maybe most definitely kava in a coffee yeah mug. there is so there we'll see in a few months. um so we have judy yap but your last name on your thing is something else. So what's yeah. your, what is your last name? It's my second surname is Gazul, but my first surname is Lyop. Yeah. It's Wall. Okay. It's Wall. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Judith is the winemaker for Vin Familia Ferrer for the past 18 years. You've been with Vin Familia Ferrer. And um, we are, some of us are tasting the Kamsala 2008. So grateful to taste this, such a beautiful wine. And as we just said, it will hopefully, fingers crossed, be available in August, September 2021. What year yeah. is it? I don't even know. We've had so much cough at this point. Um, <laughs> so, um, Judith, yeah, uh, will you tell us your experience with working for this family business throughout the past 18 years? Uh, hi, everyone. First of all, thank you very much uh, for letting us participate in this female wine event. For me, it's a pleasure uh, to be here and to share with uh, all of you uh, the cavas that uh, we make. Um, for me, it has been really hard to be a female winemaker. When I was nine years, I told to my father that I want to be a winemaker. So my father just say, you know what you are saying to be a female winemaker? And I say, yeah. So I work really hard. I work in different countries around the world, in Australia, in Chile, and at the end, I decided I want to come back uh, where are my roots and to work with uh, traditional varieties uh, where I am and where I am born. So thanks everybody for, for it. So well, yeah, I beat, sorry. So, so you know, you, I, I love that you, you faced yeah, I've been involved in this as a female wanting to go into a male dominated industry. And that was the reason I launched the Physics Female in 2016. So it was all because I was finding that myself and many other females were facing challenges on being taken seriously and entering the field. And so this is exactly why we're all here today. And we have such a great support system here drinking kava mm -hmm. with all of any, you. Any doubters? Any doubters out there are tasting this and crying. Yes. That's what they're doing. 
Exactly. So, uh, we make uh, two kinds of cava. Uh, the, so for us, what is important is uh, to treat the wine with the maximum respect, relying on technology, but also with the tradition of that our ancestors uh, gave us. Uh, for the reason, we work just with the uh, indigenous varieties from the region, uh, are Charello and Parellada. Just uh, the cava that today we are tasting is Cansala 2008, 50% Charello and 50% Parellada. Uh, it's 2008, so it means that it has been aging 13 years in bottle. So um, it's a challenge. Uh, and uh, for us, uh, we just bet it and uh, with it, we have to go on this direction and uh, let's try uh, what happened. So Parellada is a variety that um, in the region is not considered a variety for making cabas for aging during years. It's a variety that gives the freshness, gives the elegance, gives the, these uh, floral notes. And we say, okay, let's do a bit different. So let's bet for the parellada and at least 40% of our cava has to be made uh, with parellada. And uh, at least our cava has to be aged for years in bottle. Um, I don't know if, if you know more or less the different uh, classifications in cava. Uh, in cava, uh, we have the uh, the cava um, semi-seco, seco brut, brut nature, and we have the top that is a um, paraje calificado. So yeah. in 2020, just there were uh, 10 cavas uh, qualify, qualify as uh, cavas de paraje, that it means qualify location, cava de paraje, and, and we make two of them. Uh, we have uh, Cansala 2008 and Vines de Cansala 2013. Uh, so what it means, Cava de Paraje? Cava is a unique product that comes from a specially selected place. Uh, it's produced from vines in a small area and they are distinguished for different uh, characteristics as a terroir and location. And, um, and you have some requirements that uh, you have to get for this accreditation. So for example, the vines must uh, be at least 10 years old, grapes must be harvested by hand, uh, the maximum yield per hectare is 8,000 kilos per hectare, um, only a single vintage cava, things like this. So, um, and the minimum uh, aging in bottle is 36 uh, months in bottle. So the cava that today we are drinking, it's 13 years in bottle. It's so beautiful. Like, I'm like, I, I just, yeah. And I'm so glad you talked about the pareja, paraje calificado, which I had to say seven times really fast and just mess it up every single time. <laughs> um, yeah. this. I mean, this is a stunner. I can't wait till this comes. I will sing it from the rooftops as soon as it's available in, in, um, in California, AKA my cellar and in my fridge. Um, but just like, I mean, the, the, the color, like you get that straw gold and then we move in from the, the fruits, the more citrus to like apricots and like nectarines and, and I get pastry. Like I just get pastry yeah. and, oh, I mean, God, who's, whoever is in Paris, if you could just also mail me 24 croissants, that would be amazing. <laughs> much, much, much amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty exceptional. Oh, and I do have a question though. So I read that this wine, you guys use a 125 year old wooden press. Yes. Like old school yes. wooden, like yes. a, a, ba a basket press or whatever. They're tell me, tell, I mean, if that's the secret to wine that tastes like this, everyone should be using them. But what does that add? So Is there yeah, the, the output, uh, when we use the press, it's uh, 42%. So uh, the, we just use the, the best um, must uh, because the extraction is really low. 
So um, if we yeah. preserve the maximum, the structure of the berry. So, yeah. Right, so we, we have some people asking when they can get this bottle again. Uh, Jen and I will make it available on via links on both of our websites for, to purchase through Jen, but also we'll send you all an email when it does become available um, through the a, uh, Yeah, so no, they're, uh, so it's not, it's, 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 it's a matter of like, a, they're going through the government approval process. So yeah. the estimate right now is August. That's what we're hoping for. Um, but I'll, I mean, I'll include it in my newsletters. If you go to my website and sign up for those, it'll definitely, I mean, Blaine and I, it's probably going to look like a picture of the two of us just drinking out of the bottle <laughs> from pure excitement. <laughs> what the announcement's going to look like on Instagram. Um, <laughs> and I I'm sure that um, you're going to hear more noise about this because we have some representatives from the Cava Dio here and then O'Donnell Lane, and we will likely do more events throughout the rest of the year promoting all of the Cava's um, that we're talking about today and then some. So or now we're, well, I want to hear I, so a friend of mine there, Tonya Pitts, I see. And I saw her eyes light up when you tried some of these wines. So I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have a second. If you're busy, just. They are absolutely gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And the sun is shining in San Francisco today. It's a gorgeous day. It's warm. It's sunny. These are all sunshine in a glass. And even if it wasn't sunny outside, you put your nose in, you taste it, and you're immediately taken somewhere else. They're absolutely stunning. So Tanya Pitts is a rock star in the wine world. And um, I just want to listen to her talk about these wines all day long right now. Can you just? I re she turned her screen off. I got all disappointed. I was like, I can't see your facial expressions anymore. So Tanya is, there are there are a few, we had a, a couple of bottles to share. So I, I was allowed to invite two people. So I inv invited Brene Royal and Tanya Pitts and they actually got all three bottles. So they're one of the, the few people in the United States of America who actually get to try that 2008 Kensala. Um, along with the other two stunning wines. I mean, like I said, I just, it's not often that a bottle is open and not empty after an hour. And to try these three wines, like the second you open them and then 15 minutes later and then half an hour later and then an hour later, I mean, they're all just singing. And how well this, this so Judith, this Kansala and how, you know, the, the doubters who are also, like I said, crying, um, that said Parayada is not a grape for aging, you know, do something else with it. That is that is an inaccurate statement because this has aged beautifully. Yeah, you know, I think what is really important is uh, to manage the the vineyards uh, to be conscious what you want to make and uh, and just is we bet for this kind of uh, cabas just we produce two cabas de paraje and, uh, and we say is what we want. So let's do uh, it. We have a lot of hectares uh, of vineyards. We have more than 100 hectares of vineyard and just we use 0.5% for making this cava. The rest we sell to other wineries and, um, and uh, yeah, it, so the the vines that you use for making this cava has to ident to be identified for the appellation and always you have to take the grace from the same uh, vines that the cava appellation controls yes so um, I know that many of you have the wines that we're tasting today, at least two of three of them. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm gonna give the bubbleista on here to Vaughn. We have JC, who's a huge wine, wine, wino, <laughs> and particularly bubbly wino. Um, we have Christina who lived in Spain for many years. Um, Cynthia, who represents women mostly women in champagne, but I, don't, I think she's an equal opportunist. 
We have Maya who is launching a sparkling wine festival in Denver. Um, we have a lot of great people. Dawn who's opening a sparkling wine bar in San Francisco <laughs> and she's apparently downed both of our bottles, I think. Not, not to throw you under the bus, John. I mean, listen, we are no judgment here. Reem, who comes to every sparkling event and is always dressed to impress. Look at that flower on her shoulder. I mean, come on, best dress. You get best dressed again. <laughs> Becky, who loves to soak up the knowledge. Tanya, if anyone has any questions, please let us know. I think now, if it's okay with my cohorts, we can maybe unmute. Shall we unmute? Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's unmute and get to some chatting. We have a question in New York. Yes, Reem. Yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Danica, and I'm Reem's friend, dear friend, and I'm invited to the event, and I'm enjoying this beautiful cover. And I have a question, since my family is also in the wine business, and I know we're talking about American market, what are the plans to export to Eastern Europe? It's beautiful color. Like, do you have a market? And... Does Judith and or Patricia want to answer this? Or who is the best fit to answer this question? So <laughs> do, you, do you mean hi, everyone? So hi. Rim, Rim, did you mean like a specific cover or? Uh, talking... The Jalida. The Jalida, no? So that question maybe should be answered by the, the responsible oh. of the brand, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, Maite. Maite. Maite yes. what, what Eastern European countries? We have Croatia. We have uh, all the ex Yugoslav. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I don't understand very well. Uh, can you translate, please, Patricia? Sí, uh, está preguntando cuando vas a exportar a, a Europa, vale? En este caso preguntaba uh, Yugoslav. You said Rim or I, I, I export to you Europe. Uh, um, I export 90% of my production. I export, my first market is the United States, I said you, but I export a lot of Sweden, Switzerland, Netherlands, Denmark, Belgium, a lot of countries in Europe because um, there are a lot of people interested in our philosophy and uh, probably the first people uh, liked uh, my philosophy was in the United States because normally they are very pioneer <laughs> in something. But uh, in the north of Europe, people like very similar uh, organic, biodynamic uh, wine growers and, and this kind of, uh, of wineries. And for me, it was more easy sales in these countries than in, in my country. Yeah. But, but and I like to go to New York. Mike. I visit two times per year New York. It's incredible because I don't speak very well, but I have my bottles all the time. So I'm safe. Well, <laughs> when you come next, um, I'm typically based in New York. We'll have a ladies' lunch in New York with Reem and all of her friends. And, <laughs> and, uh, and anyone in New York can come. Uh, it's, not hard, it's not hard to get me to New York, but my, so Maita, currently your wine are, are not in Eastern Europe. Right. Okay. No, no está, no, Maite, disponible en Eastern Europe, es lo que están preguntando ahora. ¿En dónde? Eastern, ¿En? no sé, la parte, eh, la parte este de Europa, si se está disponible. Uh, yes, we sell in... Um... In Poland, we sell in, in Czech Republic, we sell in Estonia, in Lithuania, and in Ukraine a lot. Okay. Well, thank you for the answer. <laughs> it's a small winery, but uh, very international. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have any questions? I, I think JC. Oh, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of want to hear about some food pairings. I mean, I know like a lot of people, especially when you go out and you order a kava, it's more of a, a, a young kava. So it'd be really interesting to hear about food pairings with an aged, more refined kava. I mean, one of my, 
to me, I put this on par with some of the best champagnes I've ever had. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And, yeah. and I would, I would, I mean, so fun fact, my favorite champagne <laughs> pairing is fried chicken. And for the last hour and a half, I have been craving nothing but fried chicken. Like I might actually <laughs> hop in my car and drive to the crack shack to get some fried chicken <laughs> as soon as we're done this phone call. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, I think, I think wines like this, so they're using the traditional method. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll let, I, I want everyone, I want each, I would live each like Judy, Maita and Martha could each uh, uh, share your favorite pairing with your wine. Um, but I have to say, I think wine, wines like this, Cava's, especially when they're made like this quality, uh, are probably one of the best pairings. You can, you can pair almost anything like that. But yes, let's, should we start with one or Martha? What is your favorite food to pair with this wine? So for uh, these uh, Cava's that have uh, this uh, aging, it's perfect uh, dish with, uh, for example, roast beef or uh, fish that's in, made in oven. So with this kind of um, textures that are creamy and are with uh, uh, the sensation in the mouth that uh, the cava can clean it, it's perfect. Then here uh, we have a traditional dish that's paella. Paella, it's fantastic for these uh, sparklings because with this acidity, with the the CO2 gas, it's perfect for cleaning the mouth. So perfect these uh, cooked uh, dishes that are typical from here. And if not, uh, roast beef or this chicken, uh, roast chicken, if you want, not fried, perhaps. <laughs> and uh, it's fantastic. I'm drooling. Just yeah, I'm totally agree with Marta. Uh, so this kind of cabas, they are very gastronomic uh, cabas. So they pair really well with everything. So, but I'm agree that uh, with these um, well structured uh, cabas, uh, it goes uh, really well. Uh, creamy plates are, for example, paella, risottos, uh, fish with some sauces and uh, yeah. Lobster. Uh, about uni. There's a really beautiful uni egg dish at my favorite, favorite uh, small plate Spanish restaurant called Casamono in New York. They I know very well. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I bet you do. I think you're, 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 you're on the menu, right? By the bottle, by the glass, everything. I uh, used to next door. So I am a big fan of uh, Casamono and um, the uni egg dish that they do has been written up everywhere and I and I love that with cabas. Also the razor clams to die for. What do you think? Razor clams. Interesting call. Uni's a great call though. We were, we actually were kind of saying that before the call. We were talking about uni and I was like Maite, yeah. what do you think? What do you think about the Casamono menu the with the cava? Ah I, I think it's good. It's a good quality food. And I, I think they have a very good uh, dishes for painting about cava. Have a good jamón. Uh, I like a lot jamón uh, ibérico, you know, with cava. And the seafood, they have a, a good seafood. I like a lot seafood with cava too. And creamy cheese. And uh, I think it's a, a good, the, good the place. The fideo there, the fideo, is, am I butchering the fideo? Sorry? Fideo. What are you saying? I'm probably saying it wrong. Fidewa, no? Ah, Fidewa. Oh. I don't know if that's what you're trying to say. I don't know, Blaine. This is perfect for Kawa. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's the same the that Blaine was, but well. <laughs> it pairs well, yeah. Two words. First word. Sounds like. Rhymes with. What's the... Is it a dish at this restaurant you're talking I about? I have a translator here. I don't know where she went. Christina, she's my translator. Um, she knows. She knows. I'll look it up. I think it's Fidewa. But I'll look it up. <laughs> Christina, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I I lived in Madrid many many years ago, and we would go out for dinner really late, and we sometimes we'd go to an Italian, and we would get like a really really heavy. Um, uh, what do they call it with the cheese spaghetti uh, marinara? Um, carbonara. 
carbonara. Heavy, heavy cheese. And we would get the um, sangria blanca. <laughs> and so then we would start and we would continue. And my, my girlfriend, Nuria, her parents would only drink cava every single night at dinner in their house. So of course, when we went out, all we did was like order bottles and bottles and bottles. So I, I like it with the heavy Italian. With, <laughs> I think it really does cut the heavy sauces. So anything with a heavy sauce and you get a nice sip of cava, it just like completely cuts that, you know, and it lightens it up and stuff like that. So, so Christina has a, uh, she lived in Spain for a long time and she had a translation business. And if she's had three glasses of kava, she she sounds like she is completely from Spain. I mean, she has the most authentic accent in the world. And uh, I don't know if you have any kava with you, Christina, but you, you. I just ordered when we were on the phone and you can check that, Jen. You can see your latest order because I did just order like 50. <laughs> I cannot wait. To be, we'll do another one of these and we'll, and we'll get on when, you know, we buy more. <laughs> I love it. So Meg from Troll Wine Life, you've been so interactive on social media about this event. I'm dying to know if you've enjoyed the wines. Hi everybody. Um, I really have enjoyed this. Um, I was really excited because I live in Mississippi. So it's really hard to get anything down here because I can't get shipments. So I was really excited um, <laughs> to be able to get this <laughs> um, and just to um, have the experience with you guys. Um, these kavas, I'm sorry, my toddler's in the background. Um, these kavas are amazing. Um, and he yells or she yells, just take us above kava. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I'll be finishing this bottle. Um, but these wines are beautiful. Um, I'm so excited about this. Uh, it's really helping me because I'm also uh, a CSW student. So. I'm thrilled um, and um, I really appreciate being on this call and it's been, it's been a good time, a good, nice little break from mommy. <laughs> well, and if I might, if I may, well, we all have some sparkling, hopefully, if I could just raise a glass to Meg because she just got into RN school to be a registered nurse and that is a huge deal. So I would like to say congratulations, my friend. Cheers to you. Mommy you. <laughs> got a candidate and RN school. That's that's quite a lot of an undertaking for you. Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, it's been a lot. I actually uh, finished my master's of healthcare administration about two weeks. So it's been a lot, but yeah, very rewarding. So <laughs> she's never been Rita, do you have any questions about Kava, Miss Champagne? Um. No, but I will have after I taste the several of them soon. <laughs> I know where to find you. I love it. I love it. When, you get, back, when you get back from friends, I'll, there'll be a couple of bottles waiting for you. Perfect. Thank you. Devon, might you have any comments or questions about the kava today? I do, actually. Hi, everybody. Um, these kavas have been just amazing, just spectacular, one after the other. They all have their own beautiful personality. And um, it's been really fun to kind of taste them side by side to see. I, I feel like, especially with, with you ladies, that part of your passion and your personality comes through in how these wines are created. And so it's been just amazing to kind of hear your stories and, and what you um, have employed in order to make these wines. And I, I really would just love to know, um, just in a few words from every, every one of you, um, what do you think about when you are creating this wine? Like, are you trying to create a, or evoke a certain feeling or are you thinking about that? Are you just kind of what's in your mind when you're your mad scientist hat is on and you're creating these wines. Good question. There are a lot of things, a lot of things different. <laughs> when we decide to make a wine, uh, we think a lot of different things. 
first of all, we think about uh, the location of the grapes if uh, they are in the mountains. So perhaps it's perfect for making a cava because of the acidity that uh, you can achieve there. Uh, if you want to make a, a red wine, uh, you have uh, other varieties here that uh, you can do it in another part, in the flat part, that's uh, perfect for this ripening, con this ripening process uh, that you can have a, a good uh, phenolic ma maturation. And then with a high alcohol, that's high, um, medium, because now uh, we prefer fresh wines, no? But um, always thinking in the location, then in the grapes, and uh, of course, about the, um, the, the story that you have with this vineyard. If this vineyard was uh, planted, uh, for example, in my case, uh, um, for the grandfather, and it's a Grenache. So thinking about uh, this variety and uh, the way that he wanted to plant and uh, why uh, he wanted this. For example, with the Grenache, uh, he wanted to have another time this uh, local variety to restart with this vinification. If you think about uh, the Chorello for Cava, you have it uh, in the foothills where uh, you can achieve uh, high acidity. And, it's, uh, and if it's uh, for a single Cava of uh, Chorello, it's perfect. So these things are the, the most important things, the location, the climate, the soil, the, the, the variety, and then your philosophy. And uh, you can uh, put your footprint in this uh, wine because it's your character, your philosophy with uh, the way of winemaking. So this is the thing. And uh, before ending, I want to invite you all, uh, the all of your group, um, when uh, it will be possible to travel, to visit Penedes region, to visit Cava region, and uh, to visit our wineries, uh, the three that are a fantastic tour to see here uh, the vineyards, the location, the philosophy of our uh, families and uh, the Cava method and this um, perfect gastronomy that we have here. So you are invited. That We're going uh, to we're gonna plan, plan a Fizz's female Cava edition trip. I yes. think, yeah. Yeah. 100%. We're going to put a 12 factor together. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to bring everybody yeah. on here and then some to Spain to visit all three of you for visiting. Yeah. That's it. Done. No, we're going to we're going to we're going to put a package together. It's happening. <laughs> I think we decided this about 2 hours ago. We're yeah. we're, we're just so, we're going to we're going to we're going to open it up to whoever wants to come, but we're we're we'll, we're going to plan a trip. It's going to be great. Yeah, we just said this months ago. We're going to we're going to start taking female trips with Jen and her company and that's it done so we'll see you UTC. yeah katie make it happen hasta, hasta pronto <laughs> one question only one question, only one question. Yes, one question. My, yes, my what time. do you think what do you think uh was the perfect time for visit you because i need to go to the united states but what do you think october 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 in october do you think all is controlled <laughs> I love September, October for Kava. And then, and yeah, I would say September, October is the best time. Uh, do you think the client for United States are open for, uh, I, we visit? In uh, September, October, yes. 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 November, it shifts to champagne. Trust me on that because I run Champagne Week. So I know that it's November. And no. beginning to October, I think. And I think Americans are now ready to travel everywhere. But We're no, all Jen, going everywhere. No, no, Jen, for for them to come visit the US, I would say September, October. Oh, or yeah. in the spring. It depends where you go, but like it, I think a lot of people would drink, uh, especially on the East Coast or up where it's cooler. Um, you'd yeah. get a lot of Kava sales when the weather warms up. So if you go in the spring and then get placements before right. the weather gets warmer, as the weather gets warmer. But if you're eager to get out here this year, I would say September, October, and then I would revert to the spring. I actually did a Kava week two years in a row in, in 
June 2016 and June 2017. So I, I do agree with Jen's point that the like summer, like early summer, late spring is really good. But um, if you're eager to get to the US after a year and a half ish of like being, not being able to travel, I would say like September, October, but I wouldn't try and dally into November, December. That's just my point of view. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah, Maya. Hi, Maya. Hello. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm out here in Denver, Colorado. It's 115 degrees. I'm dying. Anyway, hello. Um, I just want to say for Cava sales in Colorado or for Denver metro area are very high in the summertime. Um, so if you ever want to come to Denver, you're more than welcome. <laughs> we have a really great... Um, Kava um, production, our, our, our clientele out here. Um, there's a producer out, Casa Valor, is the owner lives out here. So he's been doing a lot. But anyway, I have a question about glassware. So um, I'm seeing different types of glasses all over here. And you know, champagne, I'm learning more about stemware and um, what for the differences between regular Kava and then Grand Reserve, do you guys have a, a, a recommendation or you're still just a bulbous, a bulbous booty as I call them? Yeah, anything, anything with a little booty is a perfect kind of glass. I, to okay. be really honest, I drink, I have this like uh, Jancis Robson glass yeah. and it's a wine glass and I'll put anything from sparkling wine to, to white wines to red wines. It's kind of like an all, all purpose glass. Uh, these I'm these I'm actually trying for the first time. I've never tried them before, but I I actually really like them for um, all sparkling wines. Okay. Um, they're the Riddell. I forget what they're called, but they they're, actually you can't see it, but they have literally they have grooves. Like I can feel it has these little grooves in it that's supposed to like open the wine up as you swirl it. I mean, to be really honest. We, I mean, we've all had wine out of a of like a coffee cup mug, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, I, I I really like the um, the champagne flutes that have a little bit of angle. I don't like them when they're too narrow and you can't swirl them. Um, like this one is actually like a perfect champagne glass. But like I said, I, m 99 percent of the time I'm drinking out of this one. Like, and I have I have the big burgundy glasses and the fancy Bordeaux glasses. But 99 percent of the time I'm drinking out of the same all-purpose glass that looks yeah, it looks exactly like what um it's got there. Yeah. so i'm i'm visiting family down south right now and i have two um motley crew of glasses because they only have what i've sent them and i've broken some here and there so i have the zaltos all-purpose glass right here and then i also have the gabriel glass gold standard here, which I, I really love the, this glass actually quite a quite a lot. Um, I also like that she's a female CEO, so that that makes me happy. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I have kind of a little bit of a mixture of glassware, and I went um, in terms of like bulb bulbousness <laughs> as we went with uh, the age. So I I have the. Jolita and the Zaltos, and then I have the Blanca and the Gold Standard, and then I have a thicker stemmed um, standard for the uh, for the Kemsala. Uh, I, I like to play, and I actually like to like take all of them and go between all three glasses and see what I'm more into. So Rita knows, much to her chagrin, that I oh, go out on my glassware. <laughs> Um, so I, the one with the grooves is called the Riddell Perform Restaurant Champagne Glass, is what I'm drinking. But yeah, it has like, I mean, it has these like weird grooves in it. Oh, I have Gabriel Glass on the Champagne Week Bubbly Boutique for 20% off. So if anyone wants that, you can Ooh. get it there. Yeah. Nice. Uh, it's already... Uh, the deductions already made there on the site. So, um, I have a question, Blaine. Yeah. Um, typical question about being a woman in a man's world. And if you could talk about one, 
one time that you came up with an idea that it, they were like, oh, that's a great idea. And you actually got credit for it yourself. <laughs> um, oh. Well, yeah. I don't know if that, I, I think I'd rather talk about the way that Business Female was born. So I was doing a ladies lunch during the 2016 elect election during Champagne Week, <laughs> which is always the second week of November. So it's always during the election. And the ladies lunch was with La Caravelle with Rita Jamey, who's on here this, this evening. And um, there was a chalkboard in the room and it was two days after the election and everyone started putting the future as female. And I was like, the fizz is female. And then the idea was born. So <laughs> that was when we, had the 2016 election and that was what prompted me to launch the business female. Um, also just, you know, as many, Judy in particular, like mentioned this, like people were like, you wanna be a female winemaker, like what, you know? And I, when I launched Champagne Week had similar sentiments and um, I said, I had an idea and I thought it was gonna be really great. So I didn't mention this to many of you earlier that don't know me, but I'm the original founder of New York Champagne Week, which launched in 2013. And then I launched uh, Business Female in 2018. Um, so we're coming up on eight years of Champagne Week. And I had a lot of people tell me like, who are you to do this? Like, who do you think you are? And I was like, I have an idea and I think it's going to work. I think I want to popularize champagne all day, every day, any day with any food, any drink. Doesn't matter who you are, you can drink champagne, right? I wanted to make it inclusive and um, diverse and, and versatile. And, and I got a lot of pushback for the first five years. So Champagne Week was born out of that and then an election and a culmination of many, many years of pushback and me fighting against that. So I wanted to generalize <laughs> more of the background. And, um, you know, I think we've all faced those challenges, everyone that's on here, uh, getting into the wine industry, cracking into it, getting a little bit of like cred, um, being taken seriously, as Judith said, becoming a winemaker. We all need to celebrate and support each other. So. Cheers. <laughs> and we have the first female vice president. We have a lot of things to celebrate. Yeah. We have some incredible women on this on this uh, event. I'm so happy to see it too, because I know in New York, everyone's getting real excited with everything opening and back up, but I'm very thrilled to continue connecting to women around the world like this. Changes are and coming. And um, we, we're due to sign off. Uh, I do want to just point out uh, Dawn, uh, who's on the call, and she's uh, opening her own sparkling wine bar in San Francisco. So I would love for everybody to support Dawn. And Dawn, please tell us before we sign off when you plan to open. And I think that you're going to be carrying some piscatas if they're available, right? Yes, I would love that. So yeah, actually, um, it's in San Jose, but super close to San Francisco um, in the Willow Glen neighborhood, opening up a high-end champagne slash sparkling wine bar. So I am really looking forward to having a, a broad spectrum of any form of wine from all over the country. And I thought these cavas were amazing. And it's really funny because I have been doing dinner parties once a month tasting sparkling wines from across the world. And we just did a cava before this happened. And I wish I had had these to serve, but I'm very much interested in these. I thought they were phenomenal wines today. And I'm just really looking forward to it. We're opening in, pushing out now to November 1st, but super excited. And um, it's kind of like my COVID baby, but um, I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be fun. I think my neighborhood is really gonna enjoy it. So please come see me if you're in the Bay Area. Congrats. What's the name? What's the name of the wine bar? I named it Bead, B-E-A-D, Bead. Excellent. Yeah, noted. Thank you. All right. So to our sparkling women of Catalonia, thank you for staying up late at night 
and telling us your story and detailing your wines. We had so much fun. I'm just going to speak for everyone on here and say that. And <laughs> so much busy fun. And uh, cheers to you all. And we look forward to continuing to promote the Visit Email Cava Packs and to introduce the Consala once it's available in the market. Mm -hmm. The second is the second it's available. Yeah. The second it's available. <laughs> Cheers. Be great. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Pleasure. Cheers, everybody. Have Bye. a wonderful